I'd like to welcome my guest, Mark Cabana, and he's currently with Bank of America, but he did spend almost 10 years with the Markets Group at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Mark, thanks for joining me on this crazy day. Let's get right into it. Uh, you've been at the Fed. You were there during the credit crisis. What type of mobilization is going on behind the scenes, and how does the Fed respond to this notion that they need to step in right now and start putting air on this tire, even though there's really not a patch on it with regard to the issues of coronavirus. Yeah, uh, thanks, Rick. Thanks for having me. So what I expect is happening at the Federal Reserve and in particular downtown at the New York Fed is that they're really trying to get a handle on what's happening in financial markets. How are markets functioning? Is there illiquidity? Is there a lot of dysfunction? And they're trying to, they're trying to take that information and run it up the chain as fast as they can. I think that what the Fed's primary aim here in the statement that Powell released on Friday was to try and act as a circuit breaker of sorts, to try and stem some of the market fear and to try and regain more orderly market conditions. So I think the Fed is mobilizing quickly. They want to act. They want to respond. And financial markets certainly do think that the Fed will act swiftly. And so do we. Just on Friday, we changed our call. We now think that the Fed is going to cut 50 basis points in March, or at least by the March meeting. Uh, there's, a real, there's a real risk that they move before the meeting. Uh, certainly, we can't rule that out. But the market expects that the Fed will respond, try and indicate that they are watching, that they are ready to act, and then follow through with that. And I think that's the right so policy Mark, you really, prescription Mark, here. you really think on March 10th there's a chance they go 50? You know, there's this underlying thread right now. That, what, we're, we're somehow disenfranchised as the globe's leading economy because we're not in pursuit of negative rates. Listen, we start firing off 50s. If this slowly disappears, do you really believe they'll put it back out there? Well, most likely we'll just keep ever getting closer to zero and negative. Yeah, you're right. So the Fed is going to use some valuable ammunition. At least that's our expectation. But if you're the Fed, you don't want to wait. You don't want to first fight the market too much. The market already thinks that the Fed is going to cut 50 in March. And if the Fed doesn't do it, they're essentially going to be hiking rates. They don't want to do that in this market environment. Second, the Fed has told us that when they encounter a significant downturn or risks of one, that they want to act swiftly and they want to try and get ahead of it. We don't know where the virus is going to go, but we certainly do know that it's a material downside risk. And I don't think that the Fed wants to sit idle on this one. I think that they want to be aggressive, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see them do. Now, look, if it blows over Excellent. quickly and you see inflation ramp up, I think that's a problem that the Fed would like to have. If inflation gets Mark, out of control. Mark, we're going to have to leave it there. Ah, all right. Mark, thank you.